Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with Radical Reggie. How's it going, dude? It's going great, man, and we're back again with more hidden gems, just like you guys wanted, and just like we promised. That's right. Uh, we have a bunch of genres here, excited to show you guys. Uh, Jason, how are you feeling about this video? I'm pumped, because I don't own any of them except for one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a look. All right, so before us, we have 11 PlayStation 2 hidden gems. Yep, uh, we added 11 this time because we have one game at the end that I think you guys are really like. Uh, huh. But uh, remember, remember I said at the end, end. yeah, it'll play a role okay. later. But the first game I want to start with is Way of the Samurai. This is a free roam samurai game. Where okay. It's called Sandbox. So you go, it's a sandbox and so you go anywhere you want, pretty much do anything you want in this game. It's pretty sick, man. Uh, huh. it's, it has timed events and you can react to them or okay. not act to them. And that affects the story in the game. Uh, you can also you can talk to people with different dialogue choices, join a, 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 a clan or whatever. Hmm. You can also, uh, you have to be careful when you're fighting people because your weapons can actually break. So you want to hmm. kind of get your weapons like... Do so they that, break too often though? They don't break too often, but okay. they can break if you're fighting too much with the same sword without having it tempered or anything okay. like that. So can you imagine you're in a sword fight and your sword breaks and the other guy is like looking at you? That'd be was, bad. You're in trouble. <laughs> but uh, a very cool game. You guys definitely should check it out. Okay. All right, next game here. This is more like a run and gun. Uh, type game. Really? And this game uh, was delayed a lot for the PS2. It was originally supposed to come out in 2004, and that is the Red Star. Hmm. This is, I think, I believe this is based off a comic book, but this is a running gun shooter uh, slash beat em up. Really? Yeah. Uh, very cool game, man. It, it really reminds me of what, uh, I don't know what, what I could say really it reminds me of, but it's, it's just a lot of fun, man. You can do hmm. combos, knock enemies up in the air, do combos on them, and you can shoot with your weapons, of course, and you fight all these crazy boss battles. This is it's insanely good. Um, the only downfall I would say the game doesn't have, it, like it was, of course, it was delayed. And it doesn't have any voice acting in it. It's a lot of text you have to read, but that's okay. fine. That's a lot, how a lot of games were back then. Oh yeah, fine. that's old school, man. So you use your imagination to think how their voices sound or whatever. But hmm. game is on point. Check it out. The Red Star. It's. It's, it's, just, it's great. It's Never seen show. that before. That's cool. All right. All right. Next game here. <laughs> we were talking about this in the car, actually, tonight. Yeah. yeah. Very dear to my heart, actually. Okay. I got this back when I was in the military. Uh, this is a survival horror uh, slash voice game. I remember reading about this in magazines going, mm -hmm. what is this? Well, this is Lifeline for okay. the PS2. Uh, Lifeline basically is a takes place. It's, this is kind of it's cool because it's kind of like a Christmas game. It takes place during Christmas time. Hmm. Uh, these people are on a satellite station in space celebrating the about celebrating Christmas, and um, some kind of outbreak happens on the on the on the on the station. So basically, you're the operator. You get locked in a room, and all you can do you, you can't get out of the room. So all you can do is talk to the girl here, which is a waitress, right. and you use the uh, headset. And you tell her what she needs to do, like open open doors for her, what she needs to shoot, what room she needs to go to. So, so you you are seeing all the different parts of the space, and you're kind you can of see guiding, everything in there. You're, you're, you're kind guiding, of guiding her, her safety, with yeah. your voice. Exactly. You tell her to open this door here, shoot that, look out. Yeah. Okay. Flee all kind of close though. It's hilarious. Mouth. Tail. Body. Red eye. Red eye. Yeah, dude! Thousands of words and phrases recognized. Yep. Okay. And how does it work? I mean, does it work well? It works well if you're patient. Now okay. You, the game, when I first so played no it years ago. yelling or screaming. When I first played the game years ago, I was younger. I would get mad and yell, and then it would confuse her oh. in the game. It confuses her. So you have to be calm. You to, no matter if she does something stupid, be calm and say, talk <laughs> clearly because. If you get pissed and you start you like yelling at her, it just it screws it all up, man. So you just have to be patient with your voice. Don't yell too loud, like all crazy. And she pretty much understands what you say. The voice commands that you could tell her come up on the screen that you can use. So it makes that you, you say them properly, and she'll understand what to do. Okay. The game is very unique, uh, very on point. I. I I, if it played properly, could be a very enjoyable experience. Yeah. So. Well, like I said, I remember reading about this thinking, wow, that's such a cool idea. Right. You know, a cool way of kind of sucking you into it and kind of making it sort of real, you know? Mm -hmm. Huh. Okay. It, 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 I, I like it, man. It's, it's really... Yeah. Yeah. It's I'd, very, I'd like to try it. Very creative. You don't, you don't see them making games like that. I know. Days, so, you I know. know. They need to. Exactly. So, next game here is a... I would say this is kind of like a tactical RPG. 
this arc the lad twilight of the spirits um hmm. uh, the reason I, I thought of this as a hidden gem because this is one of the Ark the Lag games that I never hear people talking about. Uh, of course, they talk about the original trilogy on the PlayStation, but this one okay. actually was the first one that was released by Sony in, in, um, hmm. in America on the PS2 system because they're the original creators of the series. Oh, okay. Very good-looking game. I actually fun battles. Uh, this I had a, I had a lot of fun with this game. The only sad part is you know when I was going through playing these games again. I realized that my data was gone. Oh, your, your, your original save. Yes, yeah, so I had to go through from the beginning. I was like, man, data is precious, guys. Make sure you take care well, of your memory cards. Especially with, with RPGs, because I, I don't know if you, you know, like so many of these old school RPGs, it's like 20 minutes of introductions, movie. Yeah, you got to watch it. No tutorial. Yeah. And you act like you've never played a game in your life. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, push like, forward to move. You're like, really? <laughs> <laughs> but it's a solid game about two brothers with their own conflicts. Uh, it's very it's well done, hmm. uh, very compelling. Uh, check it 14 out. Fourteen playable characters. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. You know, I've seen this cover before. Mm -hmm. Didn't know anything about it. So. Yeah, it's, it's. I think it's the best Ark the Lad game, but I could be wrong. But, okay. Cool. Yeah. Wow. This next one, I'm surprised. Um, I'm not. But, well, I, I'm just saying because I'm just saying because the movie was it's it's Van Helsing, right? And the movie was okay. Yeah, you know what's you know? funny? So I was in the army when this came out, and I remember when the movie came out, everybody was going to go see it. Yeah, I was like, Nah, man, I'm good. I got the game right here. I just played the game. You guys go see the movie. <laughs> so the game actually turned out better than the movie. This game, it's like a, I think of like Devil May Cry in a way. Really? Yeah. Oh. Not not too crazy combo heavy like right. Devil May Cry but definitely like that and it was more of a horror to me I think it's like has more scary oh well that makes sense there. okay that's cool a uh, very solid looking title um, the graphics are good on it they actually got uh, what's the actor's name uh, that plays him? oh Hugh Jackman thank you yes. Hugh Jackman they got his his face down the voice he did he, oh really he, he sounded like he was really into the character it was, hmm. it was he did a good job and it says bonus a Van Helsing uh, movie ticket inside yeah they, they were in there and I actually gave them to a friend okay uh, so I was looking for it <laughs> It would be awesome should, to show off. I should have kept them, though. Yeah, it would have been awesome to show it off. But definitely a solid game. Uh, hmm. I, I like it a lot. I had fun. I beat this game. It was. I think it's. It, it doesn't get enough credit. Yeah, you know, I love it whenever it's a licensed game like this and it's actually decent. Yes, exactly. That means a lot when they do that. Wow, okay. This next one is the one that I snuck into this batch of games here because you didn't have a racing game. And I love my racing games and a total hidden gem on the PlayStation 2 is Shocks. So this is by EA. And this is back when EA was doing EA Big. It's oh, in the that. game. Right? When there was everything was extreme, mm -hmm. like SSX and all those kind of games. So this is Extreme Rally Racing. It's arcade. Mm -hmm. And it's completely solid. This is a really fun, solid uh, rally racing game. It's arcade. It's got licensed cars. It's got a bunch of tracks. And the reason why it's called Shocks is not because of the shocks in the car. It's because the tracks have this thing called Shock Zones. Mm -hmm. And there's three of them per track where basically think of it as almost like a flag that you drive through. And you have a certain time limit to get to the other flag right. and it starts counting down in the middle of a race oh wow so that's kind of yeah. okay, okay yeah so and, and so not only are you trying to just drive fast and, and and avoid other cars but you're trying to get through the shock zones as quickly as possible because you get paid so there's three of them so if, so you'll have bronze silver and gold depending on how fast you get through them you need money to basically upgrade your cars so it's a little bit of a dynamic i would never seen in one of these kind of games before um Super fun. I wow, mean, it keeps it fresh though. Like, you know, like, whoa, I gotta do this now. It's like, constant. It's constant. And if you get three golds, it does something called a shock wave, which basically goes out in front of the car. It's really hard to do. I tried to do it when I was capturing footage. I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, it's a shock wave that sort of like uh, helps you kind of get more money in the game and stuff like that. But uh, the Mini Cooper on the cover. I like Yeah, that. it's a really cool total hidden gem. If, if you played every other racing game on the PS2, pick up Shocks. Okay. Yeah. Awesome, dude. All right, next game here. Here's one of the games I lost my memory for. Uh, I had every, I had all these memory saves for this game because I, okay. like, I like having my memory at certain spots so I can go back to the story and like look at my favorite parts. Huh. But how many memory cards do you have, dude? I think I have like twenty for, for the PS2. Yeah. 20. Jeez. I know, right? And you know, those memory cards were like back in the day, like they were yeah. pretty big for the time. But yeah. I just got the precious data, you know. Yeah. Huh. That's cool. <laughs> Spy fiction for the PS2. Uh, man, what a hidden gem this is. I bought this game when it first came out. It's an espionage, a stealth game, where you actually use disguises mm -hmm. to, uh, the, the, to imitate your, like to like to fool your enemies. Okay. So you basically uh, can like, you, you, can, you can like, uh, 
what, what's the word I'm looking for? For you have to, uh, so you're stealth, of course, but you can be invisible too, like camouflage. That's the word I was looking oh, for. Okay. Sorry, folks. <laughs> camouflage. So you can be invisible, and you can hang on walls and like, 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 just like be invisible for a little while. Huh. But the, the, there's two different characters you can use. Uh, first one is Billy Bishop. Now he could, he could like disguise himself as anybody, but he can't disguise himself as a woman, of course. So that's his only, that's his downfall that he can't do any everything. Okay. The girl, she could disguise herself as anybody but her voice can't change so that's her oh. fault like oh, you know, interesting yeah okay. actually enemies actually talk to you so if your voice doesn't sound right they'll know something's going on oh okay so basically you're going against nuclear uh i think a terrorist uh threat from what i remember yeah. i would have remembered if i had the memory card saved <laughs> but i'm playing it again right now to get back to where i was and it's just a really hidden gem man this game came out and nobody was talking about yeah, it i had yeah. a great time with it and Nobody knows about it. I say, hey, you play spy fiction? Like, what? Like, yeah. oh, man, you're missing out. Well, so. that's the thing on the PS2. There are so many games like this mm -hmm. that were, I mean, you and I were talking about this earlier is that one of the really fun things about the PS2 is that game companies took chances. They would yes. they would take chances to do this kind of game like this where it's not a licensed property, mm -hmm. do something interesting that maybe they, it's not in their wheelhouse, stuff like that. So that's cool, man. Uh, Sammy Studios. Yep. Huh. And it says Sega on the back. So I wonder. I wonder what the deal with that is. I wonder if, actually, Sammy, I think, was a publisher in the U.S. And oh, it, so it Sega probably, okay. It, I could be wrong about that, but maybe Sega made it in Japan and then Sammy well, brought it to the if US. Sega made this, this, this shows that what Sega was getting. Yeah, I, again, I don't know. I'm just spitballing they're, here, but, huh. Excellent games they made. All right, cool. Uh, next game here, I guess I would call this a tactical RPG or maybe like a Lemmings type. Hmm. Grim Grimoire for the PS2. Cool cover, uh, by the way. Our friends of Vanillaware did the art, the same people did uh, Makes sense. Golden Seer yeah. and uh, Dragon's Crown. And uh, what's the other game uh, on the PS4 or PS3 to beat them up one? I can't think of the name of it. But you guys remember in the comments, let us know. <laughs> anyway. So many games. So many games. A <laughs> uh, really uh, deep and intriguing story this game has. I mean, seriously, I, I played this game and you know, the, the, the combat didn't get me right away. You know, I, I got used to it, mm -hmm. and then, but the story was is what really drives this game. Oh my God, the story takes a turn for something else. This game starts off kid friendly and then I don't, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but it just, the story changes, I'll just say that, and it changes in a way you wouldn't even imagine. Really? Uh, but hmm. great voice acting, uh, storyline. Uh, you, you're, you're basically a girl, play, her name is Lilith Blonde. She's going to a magic academy to learn how to use magics and stuff like that. So she's learning. And basically, you go in there for five days. Now, in that five days, you're supposed to learn all this stuff. Uh, but it's like the craziest five days of her life, if I can say that much. <laughs> really? And, uh, yeah. Huh. Well, it, I, I love the artwork. Yeah, the artwork is fantastic, man. I mean, this game is, uh, oh my God, it's, just, it's so amazing. Um, I haven't played it in a long time, but when I when I played it, the capture footage, I was like, oh my God, how am I not playing this game? Yeah. Like, I had such a great time playing it. Came out around the same time Odin Spear came out. So they came out at the same oh, time as each other. okay. Interesting. So, very cool game. You see this out there, pick it up. Okay. Another right. one, another Sammy Studios here that another I have seen Studios, yeah. Okay. Uh, this game is Seven Samurai, uh, Seven Samurai 2000 XX. Um, hmm. This game is a slasher beat em up pretty much. Uh, it's kind of based off the Seven Samurai uh, movie that came out years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's more of a futuristic one. Okay. Uh, Oh yeah, almost a little Final Fantasy looking kind of game. Yeah, yeah. Huh. It, it, it's, it's a really cool game. It's, it's a lot of beat em up. They, the game has a teen rating because you're mostly fighting robots in the game. Because if you're right here, they had to get the M rating. Right. But uh, very fast action, very fast paced action. Uh, jumping around, just slashing people. It's just a lot of beat em up. And, but uh, mostly the game is known for like more of its story because every time you have you have a fight with an enemy, it just goes right into a story and it has like a drawn out cut scene. Oh, it, it's inspired by uh, Kurosaka's Seven Samurai, the movie. That's a classic movie. Like that's like classic black and white movie, I think. Right? Okay. Yeah, and huh. I, I remember I bought this game and no one was ever talking about it. I said, hey, Sam Seven Samurai, you play that? Like, huh? Hmm. I was like, oh man, you're missing out. But wow. You guys don't have to miss out because it's right here. It looks like quality. Yeah, it's a good game. It's just a lot. Of, it's once you get used to the well, the controls are hard, but it's a lot of slashing stuff going on. You have one sword, and if you push both L and R buttons at the same time, he pulls out both swords, and he goes to work. Hmm. You have a timer that counts down while you're in that crazy mode. And he just starts cutting everybody up. I mean, like, hmm. like Ninja Turtles and pizza. So <laughs> it's great, man. I mean, I like this game a lot. Hopefully, okay. you guys will too. Let me know what you think about this game because I, I I like to know some opinions about it. I don't. Yeah. No one talks about it. All right, guys. So next game is going to be something that's you probably you guys you, the people that know about this game you're going to laugh, but uh, and you, the reasons why I'll go into you in a sec. But uh, Castle Shishigami Part Two. Now this is a fantastic shoot 'em up mm -hmm. game, but the port to America was uh, 
the voice acting was so horrendous. It, it's, it's hilarious. I mean, really? Yeah, they, they they pretty much took the Japanese uh, text and just translated it into English, just raw, just right oh. there without changing it up a little bit. And oh, really? Yeah, it's, it sounds so weird and uninspired. It's hilarious, though. <laughs> okay. This game has one of the, it's probably one of the worst, uh, like, voice acting jobs ever in video game history. It's Hi, what a cute boy. Interested in my body, aren't you? Not interested. Oh, you're into that. I like girls, but now it's about justice. My name is Ko, and I'm beating down evil. Stop bothering me. Now listen, you have two choices. A, beaten and then get caught, or B, caught and then get beaten. You're an idiot. Let me finish you. But the game is fantastic. I mean, it's a, one of the, it's a great shoot 'em up, fast paced, uh, lots of action, good boss battle, music is fantastic. But the voice acting, English voice acting is like, oh my God, it leaves something to be desired, but it's so good. I mean, it's so bad. It can be considered good for a laugh. You know what I mean? Uh, if you see Castle Shishigami part two, pick it up. Also, just a little other note about the game. Uh, the first game of the series was actually came, released in America as Mobile Light Force 2. On oh, PS2. very notorious. That's yeah. right. Because it, it, it almost looks like a Charlie's Angel. Exactly. They yes. put that weird cover on there and they yeah. thought it was, I don't know what the guy was thinking. <laughs> but they say, hey, no, we're not going to make that mistake with the second game. So they, they let it keep it its original title. They didn't cut anything out that I know of. Hmm. But they added bad voice acting. So if you like bad voice acting, but a good shoot 'em up. Game, I do. That's so funny. We'll have to play that. Pick it up. Okay. <laughs> Remember what I said earlier in the video? Huh. The end game. Well, in game. <laughs> I said I meant to say just the end, but I actually said the whole title was in game. Was the end? This last game I was going to show you guys. In game is a rail is a rail shooter. Rail it, shooter. Yeah, like time. It plays like Time Crisis. Really? Yes, Time Crisis. Oh, it's a gun con game. Mm-hmm. Gun con. Nobody knows about it. If you ever seen that movie, uh, See Lola Run. Oh yes, love it, that movie. It totally reminds really? me of that. Yes, definitely. It, I think it was inspired by the movie. Dude, seriously, I love that movie. Yeah, me too. So I was huh. like, whoa. So. Uh, it has that. It has the main game in here, and also has a mini game in there. I forgot what the mini game is called. It's like two games in one, pretty much. Wow. Solid title. Uh, this is the rail shooter that no one's talking about. No one knows about. Uh, just. It's great. Well, I've seen this again at Expos and assumed it's some really bad low Badly, budget. Yeah. But seeing Gun Con on the back there, I'm like, I must. If, if they own put this. Gun Con on the cover, it, it would have helped the yes, sales. Yes. It's, nobody knows what it is, you know. But uh, seriously, a good game. It, it actually has a little story. It's a really good story to it, too. Really? Like that. Yeah, they added a little story and well, it's, a little it's, cheese, so but it's great. It's saying 20 locations uh, based on detailed settings uh, spanning the globe. I mean, fully interactive and destructible. This, okay, I want this. Ooh, and here's a throw back to our last hidden gems video on PS2 renderware oh yeah they did the game so oh, they use their stuff that's awesome huh. so uh in game yeah. you see this game i promise it won't let you down awesome dude so excited yeah. i'm so excited to do hidden gems on the ps2 again yeah we're back doing them again this i know great, man all right doesn't it feel good to go back and play the ps2 it really does man i had such a good time playing these games i mean i was up until like I think I was up until five in the morning, man. I was, yeah. But I was I, I was tired, but I had a great time. I was burnt, yeah. but I was I was a good burn. It know? is. I mean, that's the thing with the PS2 is that it, it was just such a great console. People ask me what my favorite console is, and the PS2 is up there for sure mm -hmm. because of the reasons we talked about. There's every kind of game. Developers took chances. Mm -hmm. They they, I don't know. It's just amazing to collect for and to play. So. It definitely is, man. Huh. Uh, so yeah. Okay. Well, dude, thank you so much for doing these. We would love to know down in the comments what games you would like to see in our third video because we could do this all day. <laughs> we love doing it. So uh, please post a comment down below. Where can people find you on the web? Radical Reggie, come check me out. YouTube channel. I might just be chilling or eating a cheeseburger. Eating check me a out. cheeseburger. Yeah, check me out. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care. In addition to doing more PlayStation 2 hidden gems, I'm also going to go back and do more hidden gems on the Nintendo Wii, as well as one of my favorite systems of all time, which is the PlayStation Portable, the PSP. I'm also going to do more hidden gems on the Xbox. I'm also going to look at hidden gems on newer consoles like the PlayStation 4 and also the Switch. So many awesome games, so little time. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching.